Hello, hello, and welcome to day one of 100 Days of Clarity. My name is Jesus Nahara, aka Said Zeus, and I am going to be your teacher for the next 100 plus days as we learn about the smart contract programming language, Clarity. Uh, to give you guys some overview before we dive in into who this is for, uh, I wrote, well, sorry, rewrote this course with the idea of making it accessible for someone who's had not an inch of programming. So if you're interested or just curious in programming, but you've never written a single line, you haven't done, you know, you haven't taken action towards that effort, this course is exactly for you. Uh, again, you know, Bitcoin, Stacks, as we're going to learn, and the Clarity language are all very, very new. And... So in order to, you know, build as much of a developer community as we can, we decided to make this course extremely accessible. Uh, that being said, if you are coming in with programming knowledge, whether it's a few quarters or a few years, um, you probably still want to review the first couple of days just because you'll see that the data and data types in Clarity are a little bit different as well with the syntax than you're probably used to. But then you're good to go to skip, you know, a couple of days ahead. So, that being said, congratulations on taking the first step and, you know, watching this first video. Uh, today, we're going to be split into two different group, into two different modules. The first part of it is we're going to break down at a very, 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 very high level, Bitcoin, Stacks, and Clarity, and how it's all going to fit together for this course. And we're also going to start installing all the software that you will need. Uh... This day one video is going to be split into two parts simply because as I was you know, doing out, finishing out this course, I realized that uh, exporting videos that are 15 to 20 minutes longer is really, really big headache. So instead of doing, instead of doing one 30 minute session, I'm just going to, day one is going to be split up into two parts. Uh, so that first part today, Bitcoin stocks and clarity and then implement installing some of the software you'll need. Okay, so what exactly is Clarity? So if you're familiar with, with Ethereum, hopefully, or if at least you've heard of it, Ethereum has a programming language that is meant just for building smart contracts on top of Ethereum. Stacks is, so Clarity is a programming language just like Solidity in Ethereum. Clarity is a programming language meant to build smart contracts on top of stacks now what is stacks just like ethereum is its own blockchain stacks is its own blockchain as well however a really big twist here is the stacks blockchain is actually recorded and i'll get into the details of that if not today definitely throughout throughout the series the history of the stacks blockchain is actually recorded on the Bitcoin blockchain. And there is a consensus algorithm that happens between Bitcoin and stocks and a mining process that glues both of these blockchains together. And so the technical term for this is that stocks is secured by the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, it doesn't necessarily store every transaction in Bitcoin because again, you know, Bitcoin's uh, block spaces is very limited on purpose. And so Stacks and the goal of the Stacks blockchain is to add smart contract functionality to Bitcoin. For now, Stacks uses its own cryptocurrency called STX or Stacks. And well, and little by little, though, it's implementing more and more Bitcoin native into the ecosystem. And in fact, one of the latest Stacks updates um, does exactly that, has a couple functions that are much more Bitcoin oriented. So at a very high level, Bitcoin is, you know, the fundamental, the hard money layer, which we want to preserve that functionality to only hard money or you know, acting as hard money. We have the Stacks blockchain, which is its own blockchain, but it's secured and anchored every block to Bitcoin. So a Stacks anchor block is only committed when a Bitcoin anchor block is committed as well. Uh, and on top of that, Clarity is the programming language you use in Stacks when you want to write smart contracts for Stacks. 
And so that is what Clarity is. Uh, smart contracts, as you'll see, it's you know essentially you know programming languages that have sorry programming languages or you know programs that run within this blockchain environment in stacks and and as you'll see they bring a ton of functionality to money right if you're taking this course or if you're looking at it you've surely heard of non-fungible tokens of fungible tokens um you know using your digital assets for yield etc cetera, etc cetera. all that functionality that you've heard of on ethereum or other blockchains stacks is hoping to bring that and in the same time bring that in a deeper connection with bitcoin cool so that's at a very high level what stacks uh, bitcoin and clarity are um for what it's worth uh we actually will review the mining and the consensus algorithm that happens between bitcoin and stacks because we actually write a contract that implements that but at another level from stacks to another fungible token and so we'll eventually get really, really deep into that deeper connection of how, you know, how is every transaction on stacks represented in, in Bitcoin, right? And, you know, we could get, we, we could talk about the technical terms of that, but today's day one, I want to keep things at a high level. Um, so now we're going to turn the page and we're going to start installing software. So as you can see by the list on the right, there's a lot of things to install here. Uh, I'm going to be running on a Mac, and I'm going to try using a Mac that hasn't been used uh, in a programming capacity quite yet. So ideally, and again, I actually have my fingers crossed for this. I hope I run into issues because I want to debug them live. Um, before I get into installing this, I do want to point out two things. Xcode command line permissions and installing Clarinet. Out of all this, out of all these list of things here, if you do just those two things, that's all you need to continue moving with the course forward. Everything else is just a bonus, supplementary. That'll you know they're good tools that'll help you significantly, but they're not needed. If this is your first time programming, I want to give a caveat here. Programming and the logic behind programming is not as foreign as you think, and it's not nearly as difficult as people make it out to be. The frustration really, really comes in integrating environments, in networking, or in other situations like that, such as installing software. Honestly, just installing software based on your computer, based on your browser, based on the tools you pick, based on your operating system. That's actually where a lot of frustration comes into play. And so while we're going through this, I want to say if you have a different setup, or if you have something else and you run into issues and you don't know how to deal with them, try to just make sure you have clarinet installed uh, if you have windows you actually won't need xcode command line installed because that's a mac thing uh if you have clarinet installed that's all you actually need to continue this course you can use notepad to write clarity for all that matters as long as clarinet is installed uh and again yeah i want to get that caveat when i started learning clarity uh tools were even less available and i actually didn't have any way of writing clarity that was remotely close to what i look now to what it looks like now was basically using notepad for six months the important part here is learning comes from momentum compounding so don't let installing things hang you up if you install only clarinet you're good don't worry about installing everything here if you run into issues cool so that being said let's turn to our mac um there's a lot of things to install. I'm going to try to explain them at a brief level, but not get you know too, too deep into them because obviously you know that would take a lot of time as well. So first thing you need is something called Xcode command line permission. Um, what exactly is that? At a high level, if you want to program on a Mac, you have to do a couple things or you know Apple requires a, a few permissions uh, in, for you to program. Whenever you see Xcode, Xcode is Apple's primary IDE. An IDE is short for Integrated Development Environment, and all it stands for is a text editor for writing code. That's that's it. So like when you think to yourself, oh, where do I go to like write my actual program? Something called an IDE. There's a lot of different IDEs. Each major company probably has one. Uh, Apple, Apple's is called Xcode. And if you wanted to build an iOS app, a Mac app, or something of that sorts, you would have to use Xcode. 
However, since we're not doing that, we don't need to fully in install Xcode, and in fact, we won't, but we do need to install Xcode, one Xcode permission. The one that we need to install is something called Xcode command line, and that takes us to our first tool. So on your Mac or on your computer, go ahead and look up a terminal and press enter. So a terminal is this you know, black and, black and white text screen that comes standard with basically every computer. And a terminal is how you can communicate with your computer and the file system that you usually, that you usually communicate with by clicking or dragging. For example, if you open up, you know, if you click Finder and you look to the left, you would see recent documents, downloads, etc. You can find those and you can click around, copy, duplicate those files, install things, install packages through the command line. So we're going to go ahead. Um, well, first off, you're going to use a command line a lot significantly in this course because Clarinet is actually a package that is installed locally to your computer and you're going to need to use the terminal to install that. Uh, well, not to install it, but to run it. So you're going to be using it frequently. Uh, Xcode, sorry, Apple requires some permissions for you to use your terminal. Uh, I'm not sure if this computer exactly already ran this or not. So, you know, bear with me in case it does nothing. But if you're on a, if you're on a Mac, the first thing you need to type after you open up terminal is Xcode dash select space dash dash install and that should be it and it looks like we do need to install this okay so that is saying we need 38 hours obviously that's you know, it's going to be significantly faster than that uh while this catches up i guess i do want to talk a little bit about the terminal and how to use it more effectively while we wait. So I'm actually going to open up another one with command N and while this one is downloading, well, while we're downloading that permission. Okay. So three basic commands with a terminal that we're going to use basically in every course and you should use them. And they both have to do with the file structure that you are currently dealing with. Um, Whenever you want to see all the files in the current file structure you're in or in the current folder, you type in ls. Uh, a folder, when you're dealing with terminal, is just called a directory or dir for short. Uh, you'll get used to the terminology, not that big of a deal. Uh, and, if, and so if we press ls right now, and it should, I thought it said for list directory, but I'm not sure. I think that could be it. It shows us all of the other folders that live within this folder, right? So we have applications, desktop downloads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All the folders that you usually find at the highest or at the root level of a file structure. Uh, okay, so ls really simple shows you everything that's there. Now, what if we actually want to go into one of those folders to change a directory? You use something called cd, short for change directory. And if you want to change into a specific directory, into a child directory, simple CD and the name of, you know, whatever, the name of the folder or directory. So here, CD documents. And if we press that, we can see this now lets us know we're in documents. And if we press LS, we will see a list of everything that is in documents. If we press CD space up, up, no, sorry, CD space, period, period. That's how you transverse up to an adult. And so if you're in a directory and you want to go to a child, CD, the name of the child. If you're in a child and you want to go back up to the parent, CD space, period, period, or CD space, dot, dot. So if we do that, we can see we go back up and we press LS, we are at the same level. Uh, so those are three very, very basic um, terminal commands, but that you'll need to use them frequently. And if we now want to just clear the terminal, because there's a lot of stuff we don't like here, or you know, there's a lot filled, all we do is type in C-L-E-A-R to clear. So clear the terminal. 
And that is, those are the very, very basics of using the terminal. And as you'll see though, we'll, we'll be using it frequently. And so right now we're still waiting for these Xcode, for this Xcode permission to happen. Uh, Cause once that does, we're gonna be able to use the terminal to install things from the terminal, which again, Clarinet is a package, is, Clarinet's basically a package that lets you run stacks, uh, stacks, stacks applications at a local level. So just on your computer without spinning up an actual stacks node or without actually connecting to like the test net or the main net of stacks. Uh, so obviously it's something that we need and we need something that we need at the local level. If you want to install a package at the local level on your Mac, you need to do it through the terminal. And to do it to the terminal, we needed this permission from Xcode to install through terminal. So we're going to go ahead and pause right here while this finishes up and we go back to the next step. Uh, and I do want to say, yeah, the next couple minutes, once we finish this, we're going to be one, uh, installing Clarinet and then two, installing and setting up your IDE, again, your integrated development environment. Again, the only thing we really need to do is set up Clarinet. So stick around. Uh, we're going to roll right into part two shortly.